Okay, I'm called Velma Muka Nyaja. I am a telecoms engineer by training from the National Advanced School of Engineering, Yaoundé, and I work under the Network Operation Center of Camtel, in charge of the team working with supervision of service platforms. Okay, um, I defended from school in September 2018. And uh, I did a couple of internships in Douala at the time, um, in oil and gas and in finance, operations to be precise. After which I got into Camtel, that was in 2020, April 2020. And I officially got recruited in September 2020. I started off at the service in charge of the access network service from the region, um, Center Regional Department, where we worked with um, the centers in charge of the access network, that's the radio access network and the fixed access network. Then in 2021, I was appointed here to lead the team in charge of supervision of service platform. Okay, um, my current responsibilities, I would say, I would divide them in three. The first one, which is network performance management. Um, we have to make sure that the quality of service and the quality of experience on the consumer side is good. So we have some KPIs that we look out for to be sure that they are to make sure that they are okay, that they are they are good, for to know that our network is optimal. Um, secondly, we carry out day-to-day -day supervision of our service platforms. So we supervise the various tools that we have, the various platforms that we have, to make sure that the equipment, the network equipment, are doing well. And um, thirdly, we also work with. Um, our partners, national and international partners, we intervene on the different solutions and the tools that we use to work. Okay, um, for my skills and qualification, I would start with communication, just because we have a, the center itself, we are more than 30 of us. We work, first of all, if you've, you've gone into the hall, it's a big hall with many people. You have to learn how to communicate with your colleagues. You have to learn how to communicate with the different partners with whom you work. So communication is definitely one of them. Um, analytical and problem solving, because we carry out troubleshooting on the network, what's wrong, what's not happening, what's, what's going on, what conclusions can we make from here. So there's a lot of analytics that you have to carry out, a lot of problem solving. And um, I will talk about flexibility and adaptability, just because in this space, in telecommunications, in technology, you have to be flexible and always ready to adapt. My greatest achievement, I would say, is when I was put in charge of two projects, one to implement the, opt um, the optical fiber or the fiber to the X network in Balmayo and the other in Nanga Ibuku. Um, principally because I, I had just started working, I was like a couple of months into the job and uh, my boss at the time had to confide such work to me. It was a big honor and a big challenge. So knowing that, okay, we're able to deploy, we didn't deploy in the entire city, but just the portions of the city where we deployed it for me was really was something, it was a good learning experience and seeing that the network there is working is definitely a big accomplishment for me. For the challenges, I will talk about two, principally. Um, yeah, there will be many, but I'll highlight two. The first one being work-life balance. Um, just because here I have a regular job, so I have to be here every day to evening. And it's challenging. I live with my elder brother. So, of course, he's my elder brother. I, there are some things I have to do. I have to go back home and cook. I have to go back home and do something. So, after a tiring day at work, you still have other responsibilities that you have to keep. And you also have to update your skills because I can't sit here and say that I have a job and that's fine. I have to learn one or two things and just being able to do all of that and feel rested can be quite challenging. So work-life balance sometimes can be really challenging. And um, uh, a little bit of imposter syndrome, just because I think it's natural every now and then you get to question yourself. Can I do this? Am I up to the task? You know, and um, when you ask yourself those questions, it's true that on my side, it also kind of boosts me to work harder because I cannot embarrass myself. Even just for embarrassment's sake, I will not do some things. So when I, every now and then I get to question myself and question my skills, I'll say those are two main challenges. First of all, I think coming from the background that a general manager is a woman, it's already a big story on its own, a big inspiration. And, um, when I look at some strategic positions in the company from 
to the best of my knowledge, I've always seen women occupy, at some point, women have occupied those positions. So it already tells you that the company has an inclusive culture, which I think that it's something that can really inspire you, you can dream. You will not look at, even if you want to be the technical director, there has been a technical director as a woman. So you look at it and you feel like, as a woman, I can dream to achieve this because it's possible. I have seen it happen and I can dream to achieve this. Invest in women accelerates progress. Um, generally, people have always said that women are like catalysts in every society. A woman will always make things faster, will always make things easier. And I look at it in the same way. If we can take time to really invest in the women, and by investing, I'm talking about both knowledge and skill, things can really go faster. Somebody once said, investing in women is, a, is good business. And I really look at it that way, that if we can properly put the systems in place to have uh, more empowered women in our society. I think that Emergence 2035 is looking really good. I would say belief, because it starts from there. You cannot dream about something, you cannot want to achieve something that you don't believe in. And um, with the world in which we live, it's very possible. We have seen people go ahead of us, we've seen women go ahead of us, we've seen women do it. I was recently going through the internet and I discovered that there have been a lot of CEOs around the world that are women that have been appointed as women and it didn't, it didn't just happen. It started from somewhere, they believed, they built themselves, which is the second thing, you believe, you build yourself. And I think that this guy will really be your limit.